Have we reached a tipping point in the gender wars? So six years ago, comedy writer Graham Linehan, the man who created hit sitcoms such as Father Ted and Black Books, was cancelled for standing up for the rights of women. But have things actually got any better? Well, I'm delighted to say that Graham Linehan joins me now. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Graham, you've obviously been on the show before and your case has been very well publicised, but just in case anyone's watching who doesn't know what happened to you, what happened? Well, I, I just noticed women being bullied online and, and in, and in uh, you know, physical space as well. Uh, uh, and I started objecting to it. Uh, I immediately started losing work. And this was um, just on Twitter or social media. Yeah. Just, just making that point. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then, um, and then, you know, I had what I thought was a bit of a kind of safety net in the Father Ted musical, which, which I saw as my pension. Yes. And uh, finally, that was taken away too by the my spineless colleagues, I'm afraid. I mean, that's incredible, isn't it? Because, you know, Father Ted, uh, one of the most famous sitcoms of all time, the musical, a surefire hit, yep. still hasn't been produced, yeah. still being held hostage by Hattrick mm. Productions, who are the people who have the rights, yeah? Yeah, yeah. It's because they're... I mean, it's, it's a combination of things. It's, it's because they're terrified of activists, they have activists within the company, and, um, uh, and they, they don't have enough interest in the women in their lives to investigate the issue. It's, yeah. it's a, an insane situation. And one of the things that's been so surprising in your case, I mean, obviously I've read your book, Tough Crowd, which is brilliant. What I love about it, it's mostly about comedy, about the craft of comedy. Mm -hmm. You also talk about what ultimately happened, is that people within the comedy industry, the, 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 supposedly the most creative people in the world, yeah. didn't come out and defend you or even ex suggest any or uh, give any signs that they were curious about these issues. Yeah, yeah, it's an extraordinary thing. I mean, I, I've seen Armando Iannucci this week, uh, uh, who, I, who was a colleague of mine. I, I worked uh, on a couple of shows he did and I appeared on the Alan Partridge show. And, uh, you know, I've, I've said many times to him that I've been cancelled, I've lost my livelihood. Um, uh, you know, why do you, why do you ignore all this? You know, because he, he's one of these people who seems to think that cancel culture doesn't exist. But I'm kind of like a living example of it, and he just kind of breezes over it. And it's because that he's... It, it's hard to explain, but they simply do not want to address this issue. And if they acknowledge that I exist, they acknowledge that the issue exists. And they are pretending, people like Armando, people like Rufus Hound today, they are all pretending that this isn't an issue. Are they just afraid that it might happen to them as well? I don't know. I think it's a combination of things. Yeah. I think it's a combination of fear. I, don't, I genuinely don't think they have enough curiosity or empathy with women to actually look into the issue. They seem to think that women's rights, as people like Alistair Campbell often say, are a culture war issue. Um, and, you know, we've seen it reach its apex, really, in that this week, and for 10 days, I think it is, uh, we've seen men hitting women, punching women in the boxing ring. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, that's kind of what I'm curious about now. Is this, is this as far as it goes, or is it going to get worse? So that's a really good question, isn't it? You know, with, with uh, a male individual winning gold in the boxing at two. women's... Two. Oh, no. that, yeah, well, there's two... He won a silver, did he? One, yeah, so there's two medalists yeah. uh, who have an intersex condition, which is not the same as a trans issue. They don't necessarily have an intersex condition. They've just said they have. We don't know, do we? Because no, no test results have been released or anything like that. This is, a, this is something I spoke about today with Dr Emma Hilton, who I know you know, uh, who is a biologist, and she's worked with a lot of people with DSD conditions. And, and the whole DSD question has actually been brought up to further muddy the issue, to confuse people, uh, to make people think that, you know, this, this poor woman is being so terribly hard done by. And all it is, is a smokescreen to cover up that a number of women were punched in the face over the last 10 days by men in the boxing ring and an audience of millions just watched it happen. Well, it's interesting. You mentioned Rufus Hound, who just tweeted out, this is a woman, stop complaining. Yeah. If, if this is a woman, why does this individual have what XY chromosomes? Has he even asked that question? Is he interested? That's a really good question. No, I think there's a lot of people, and, and I have a word for them, and I think it's shared by a few other people, NPCs, which is the name for uh, when you're playing a computer game, all the people you meet who aren't human beings. Yes. Uh, uh, now, that's not to say, I don't want to take away Rufus's humanity, but he is behaving from a set script. He is, he is just reciting things he has heard from other people. He is trusting that his fellow non-player characters are telling them, him the truth. And of course, they're all, they're all 
people either lying or uh, they simply don't know. So, but as you say, the spectacle of someone actually being punched, a, physical, a matter of physical safety now, can this be the tipping point? I mean, judging from this week, it looks like not. Yes, <laughs> but... but but I think there's some things to be cheered up about. First of all, I just wanted to make sure people know, a man punches a woman uh, 100, and it's something like 146% times harder than yes. a woman can, you know? So a woman could actually be killed in the ring. And the great thing about this week, even though you see the usual obfuscation, the usual, you know, useful idiots like Hound and Laurie Penny and people like this, Seb Co. Uh, he may be the next uh, Olympics. He may take over from the, the lunatics who were running it this year. If he does, he said something like, I have daughters, of course this is a, an interesting subject to me. And I think he was actually very, very shocked by what happened in yes. over the last 10 days. Well, and we've also had, for instance, Wes Streeting saying he's going to implement the West cast Street review. Wes is another good example, yes. So, you know, although there's a lot of resistance within Labour, they still haven't apologised to Rosie Duffield. Mm -hmm. um, but do you... Do you are you optimistic now that this kind of, with the cast review, even though so many people are denying that it even matters, mm. ultimately, some time in the distance, the truth has to win out? Yes, it does. But, but I think the major problem at the moment is that the BBC has so little authority. It used to be the gold standard in terms of news. We looked to the BBC for, uh, to kind of make sense of the world. And the BBC, Possibly, only The Guardian is as dishonest as the BBC in reporting on this issue. Sorry, The Guardian and Pink News. The, you know, they, they <laughs> Pink are, News goes without saying. Without saying. Yeah. But, like, the BBC is actively trying to suppress uh, the information around this issue. They're actively trying to confuse the public. And they are... Um, I genuinely think that when this is all over and there is a... Uh, is a, uh, what do you call it, an investigation, uh, I can't remember the word, but an investigation is a whole affair. I think the BBC has to be uh, uh, investigated too, because they have let this all happen. Well, I mean, they, they claim, I mean, I actually contacted the BBC to ask why they, why they hadn't covered the WPATH files, for mm. instance, you know, uh, and they just came back with some boilerplate about how, well, we, we can't cover every story was effectively... Th <laughs> what do you make of that defence? Do you think well, that's fair? Well, I'll tell you what, that defence might make sense if uh, the WPATH files did didn't reveal that the entire uh, uh, edifice of trans healthcare is built on sand. You know, these are a bunch of ideological lunatics. The head of WPATH wasn't even a doctor. And, and most of all, and I, I know I, I go on about this, but it's one of those things that I still can't believe isn't a, a massive scandal. Yes. WPATH linked to a page full of child pornography about castration. Yeah, this was the eunuch files. The eunuch archive. Yeah. It was something like 5,000 uh, 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 erotic short stories about castration, and 40% of them were marked minor. Yes. So that's 40% of them are about castrating children. So the organization that's saying we should castrate children is also linking to a website for men who are turned on by the idea of castrating children. And because that sounds... How so is that not news? And people will say that's incredible, can't be true. So I would just alert them to WPATH version 8, standards of care. Yes. The draft version which they uploaded had that link in it. Yes. And this was all reported by Redux magazine. And it also included eunuch as a gender identity. Yes. And when the WPATH files came out and Redux reported on this, they removed all this from the website immediately. So they knew there was, a, there was an issue there. Yeah. Uh, all right, well, Graham, thanks so much for joining. I want to just finally mention your book, Tough Crowd. Just uh, how's that oh, been going? I already did. Oh, I, did, I know, but I think you should mention it again. Uh, it's, it's going OK. It's okay. going OK. It's, again, it's hard to find in bookshops because, book, book, you know, uh, the people who run bookshops don't want it to do well. So uh, if you do want it, I would say go to Amazon or any kind of online dealership. Fantastic. Graham Linnan, thanks so much for joining me. Thank you.